So I'm in the British National Museum. And at the time that I got to go there, I was uh, intensely studying certain aspects of the scripture and their connection to governance and their relationship to human history. How the, the covenantal relationship of God with man, with individuals, but also with nations, how that played out in human history. So I, I, I was like a boy, you know, in a candy store and go, just seeing all these magnificent, magnificent uh, archives and, and, and rem, remnants and relics. It just, it just, it's just amazing. And then when I finally saw the sign for the Israel room, I was like, yes! And I go around the corner and I go in and it's poorly lit. And it's really small. It's just one room. And guess what's in it? There's a model of the temple. There was a Hebrew scriptures. And there were some broken pieces of pottery. And there were some pieces of silverware. Basically, that's it. When you go down the Babylonian wing, massive, massive gates. These huge stone idols in the Egyptian room. Massive, just like the power and the authority. And in the Israel room, there's a temple and there's cutlery. Dishes and the scriptures. There might have been a couple other things, but that's what I remember. There might have been like a mock-up of what the high priest wore, his outfit. And as you can imagine, I was disappointed. And then it hit me. It hit me like a ton of bricks. It's because Israel was free. They were a free people. They had the law of God. Babylon, Egypt, these were massive slave empires. The Romans... The reason they could build the Colosseum, the reason they could build the Forum, and the, all these pagan temples, is they had a massive slave labor force. These massive structures that you can see in the British Museum, and then you can go to Rome, etc. The reason you can see them is because these were pagan nations under pagan laws where a massive portion of the populace, depending on the nation, was in effect, was a slave labor force. The Greeks, the, the, just go down the, the line. And Israel was free. So they didn't have all these massive structures built by slave laborers. They had cutlery. They were civilized. Every man could sit under his fig tree. And they made the model of the temple because the temple is where they had the true God dwelling between the cherubim. The law inside of the ark, Aaron's rod that budded. It was truth. And truth, true justice, as given by the Almighty, enabled people to sit under their own fig tree. They didn't have a cruel whip over their back like they did in Egypt. They got to enjoy their wife and their children. And the Israels, the Israelites in the law of God given to them by God, had rules about how they built their homes. Leaving an uncovered hole, a well. If they had an animal that had a habit of goring someone. They had rules that developed what we would call civilization. Civilization with freedom. The Egyptians had a civilization. It was based upon a slave labor force. The Babylonians did. The Romans did. They had a civilization. They had a level of peace because they were able to browbeat a great portion of the population into peaceful submission into slavery. But the Jews had the law of God. And the king of Israel, do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember what the king of Israel was required to do? Every year he was required to write an entire copy of the law of God once a year. If that's my memory, if my memory is correct, he was supposed to write it with his own hand. Not just read it, to write it. Because God wanted him to know 
He wasn't the boss. The king is not the boss. You don't get to behave like the pagan kings. You don't get to have all of Israel as your slave labor force. You stand before me just as they do. You have to come to the same temple as they do. In fact, O king, you're not even allowed to do sacrifices. One of the kings of Israel tried to go in and do a sacrifice and God struck him with leprosy in his head because he dared to try and assume to himself the office of the priest. If you look at Egypt or Rome, when you see the leader, you see the Pharaoh, you see God. When you see the Roman emperor, you see God. It was all a lie. But that God used his authority and his power unjustly to create a slave labor force and to basically create a slave state. Not Israel. Not Israel. Do you see where this is headed? Well, it's very simple. The nations that have the, the laws of their culture that most accurately reflect what God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai, they have the most freedom. If you were to take the ruins of America versus the ruins of other nations, you're going to find a lot of cutlery. You're going to find home after home after home after home where people got to sit under their own fig tree. They got to enjoy their wives and their children. They got to be free. They had peace, but they had liberty as well as the Jews did. But what's happening right now to bring this all the way around is we have been drifting steadily, slowly, dangerously from a free people to a slave labor force on the federal plantation. Let me make my point when I come back from this break. Stay with me.